In this video, we're going to learn about how to use root params. Root params allow us to create completely dynamic URLs that we can grab some information from the actual URL itself and then parse it into JavaScript and then go and communicate with the back end. We've already looked at routing resolves, which allow us to pull in my particular GitHub repos. One addition that I've made is I've actually created a form here that accepts user input and we can click view repos and we want to change the URL. So if I type in somebody else's username, we can click this button and it will reveal all of their GitHub repos. And it will also change the URL, which means if we actually sent someone the URL with repos forward slash top motto, it would reveal all of mine. Whereas if we sent someone somebody else's repos, so if we had forward slash repos forward slash Paul Irish, it would default to fetching just his repos. So here's the quick markup for the actual repos component that's been changed. We have a form with ng submit, which calls submit form. So we need to actually create a controller here that will actually handle this for us. And we can use the dollar state service from UI router to actually control where we want to go to a particular state. Before we do that, we'll actually go and set up the URLs in the actual state provider first. Let's assume that we want to do forward slash top motto in the URL. This would then go and fetch all of my GitHub repos. The way that we do this in UI router, instead of hard coding a person's name, for example, we use this colon. So we're going to create a property called username. So this allows the URL to be completely dynamic. What we can then do in this resolve function is actually grab the username that the person has entered in the URL and we want to pass it into this particular service, which will go and get their particular username from the GitHub API. So we jump into the service, we have this.getRepos. Now this function's actually going to give us the params in the actual URL. Now at the minute we have a hard-coded API string with my username in, whereas we want to actually change this to the actual params. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Normally when we do things like this, we use string concatenation. So we can have the URL and then we can do something like params and then we finish off the rest of the URL. Now, this is a fine way of doing things. However, with the new version of the JavaScript language, ES2015, we can actually use these back ticks. What we're actually going to do is take this and the way that we make this dynamic, we don't split the string and then do params. What we actually do is we use a dollar sign and then these braces and then we can just pass in params. So this allows us to pass a value into a string, which is a special ES6 string with these back ticks, and it will automatically compile the string from the params object for us. So now that's taken care of, we can go back to the component. And now we need to actually make sure that we're fetching the params and passing the params in here. So the username is now expected in the URL, and we need to now inject dollar transitions. Now we want to actually use the one with the dollar on the end. So what we can do here is var params, and then we can do equals dollar transitions. Now we actually looked at this in the beginning. So we, we had all these different methods like dot on start and on success. There's also another property called params. This is just a function that we can call and it will re actually return as an object. So before we go any further, we'll actually log out the params and see what we actually get when we change the URL. So at the minute we are on forward slash repos slash top motto and we've clicked on GitHub repos. Now this actually says undefined.github.io because this is actually going to somebody who has a username called undefined. Now if we look we have username and we have the value of top motto. So what we need to do is actually do transitions.params.username to actually access this value dynamically. Now if I show you that we can change this, we'll use Paul Irish, you can then see that this object has been updated. So this is a way we can create dynamic routes and fetch the data dynamically. So what we can now do is do dot username on the end to access that particular object. And now we want to actually pass in params. So that will make the argument defined, whereas before params was actually undefined, which is why we saw undefined in the string. We can get rid of the console log and we can go and test this out. And this should dynamically fetch the repos for usernames that we type in. There's one more thing that we actually need to do before we can actually use this. So we need to create a property called params and we need to give it a default value. So we can give it a username and then we can just say null. So this essentially provides a default value for the username property. We could actually hard code a default value, so we could put my username in, but we'll show you that in a second. So when we go back to the browser, we can click on GitHub repos. Now at the minute, we're actually going to forward slash null, which is actually a user account on GitHub. We'll come back less in a second, but what we'll actually do is do forward slash top motto. And then you can see that all of my repos have now appeared. We can do the same with Paul Irish, and we can go and fetch some of his GitHub repos. 
Now, these aren't all the repos because they cap the actual API. So let's go and hook up this actual form using the dollar state. And then we'll look at how to use query params in the URL instead of a forward slash. So we can actually do something like question mark, username equals top motto. So one safety check that we want to do is we want to say if there aren't params, then we just want to simply return. So this will actually stop the actual route providing null as a default when we actually land on the first page. So this will prevent the API from actually running this line of code. So if we land at forward slash repos, then this actual list argument becomes undefined. Therefore, in the actual template, we have an ng hide that says we want to hide this element if the control dot list dot length. So this will actually run and say there's nothing here yet, which we'll actually see in a moment. So let's go and create this controller to actually handle the form submission. So we can inject the dollar state service, which we haven't covered yet. So we'll actually take a quick look at dollar state, and then we'll actually use it to navigate to a dynamic view. So in the browser, we have this state service, which has all these different methods. So we can call particular functions like go, includes, is, we can access params, and we get a few other methods like transition to. We're actually going to use state and then dot go to actually transition to a particular state. We're actually going to do this when we type in a particular value and then press view repos. So we need to actually hook into this on submit function. So in the template, we're actually calling submit form. So let's go ahead and create a property. We could do this dot submit form equals the function. So this gets ran when the form is submitted. And in this case, we want to do state.go and we want to reference the repo state. So the first argument is the actual state that we want to transition to. And then the second argument, which is optional, is some further information. So we can actually provide username property, which if you remember, corresponds to the URL. And instead of using a hard coded value like top motto, we can actually use a property which is available on the scope. So if we go back to the template, we have an input here with $control.name. So the ng model will automatically create this property on the scope for us, so we can access it via this.name. So we can do username and then this.name. So when the form gets submitted, we use the state service, we say we want to go to the particular repos, and here's the information of what I want to populate the URL in the username for. So we land back on GitHub repos, and you can see here we have nothing here yet, type and search. So we can go ahead and type in top motto. Now, before I press submit, keep an eye on this actual URL here because it will actually put my name in the URL. So there you go, the XHR request has been made, and now we're at forward slash repos slash top motto. Now, the really cool thing about this is if we open a new tab and paste it in, it actually goes and gets my particular repos. So it actually can read the URL and then make the request, or we can actually do it via user input. So here, if we type in Paul Irish, press view repos, it's then changed the URL, and we've got Paul Irish's repos. There's one more thing that we can also do, is actually change this forward slash colon to a question mark. This actually says that we want to use a query string. So we'll go ahead and actually look at this as well. And that's the only change that we need to actually make. So we can click on GitHub repos, and we can say top motto, press view repos, and it automatically changes it to question mark equals and then top motto. So this gives you an example of using query strings. So we can change this to Paul Irish, press enter, and everything updates with his information. There's one more thing that you might have noticed in the URL is that they actually have a forward slash. So to overcome this, we can actually use this dollar and then location provider. So the location provider actually has an HTML5 mode that we can activate. So now we've injected location provider, what we can do is location provider, HTML5 mode, and then we can just pass in true. So what it will actually do is change myapp.com forward slash hash and then forward slash repos. So this is what we're currently seeing is this hash and we actually use this to support older browsers. So if you actually want cleaner URLs where we just had forward slash repos, you'll actually need some server side configuration to handle these routes. So I'm gonna leave this in here and I'll comment it out so you just have a reference to it. The final thing I want to show you is inside this email component. Now it doesn't apply just to this email component, but you can see here we have this views property which we have the object inside. Now we have details at contact and we provide in another object. To finish off the video on URI router, I'm gonna show you a shorthand method that we can actually use to specify the exact same thing as component and then contact email. So we can actually get rid of this altogether and just leave it as details at contact and then contact email. And that's it.
So we've covered a lot so far, and you've now learned how to provide dynamic URLs and query parameters.